this is just a short presentation about uh, readme files and how to update them and we have this powerpoint here and we'll look at a little of the source code uh, as we go so uh, so this is our starting slide here and okay yeah we got it up there uh, so that looks good uh, so uh, let's here we are. One simply doesn't put the wrong information in the readme file. So uh, one of my pet peeves is there's a large amount of developers, including myself, who never update the readme file. And if you release any software, you need to really update the readme file. But when then you uh, go to update the readme file, it is um, a whole other programming language. And that is a bit frustrating. Uh, so I have put a copy of my uh, readme file up here in my Python class uh, over at Aloha Wild that I wrote a couple years back. And that's actually where I learned how to put up with readme file. So on to the next uh, thing. Uh, one doesn't always, this is my favorite actually. This is my absolute favorite. I'm gonna, I swear I'm gonna get t-shirts made for that and give it to the architects at Nike. Uh, so anyways, here we are. Uh, and uh, I put at the top there how to update uh, your, uh, there's the manual on there from GitHub. Uh, it's not WYSIWYG uh, when you are typing this stuff. It is actually, uh, unfortunately, coding. And what you're really doing is telling the engine what to do. So this is an old school uh, display software. And what it did is it takes commands and then the commands display some of the data, but you cannot control the formatting at all. You must give up control and you must just let it do its thing. So here is the example uh, I have here. You put a pound sign there. Now you're supposed to put the pound sign on the other side, but no one tells you that that, that doesn't actually do anything. So you're supposed to put it surrounded by pound signs, but yeah. But actually I just code one pound sign. And so, and so you'll hear, this is my great production. That will replace, that'll be the title of your file. And that text, now if you mess with that text and try to format it, add spaces, anything, it will simply ignore you and print it out the way it wants. Yeah. And that is just the way it is. Remember, it is not WYSIWYG. And then the next level is there. You just have to let it flow. Be one with the readme file. Don't resist. And so that takes us to the uh, next uh, cool one. Yes, I, I like this is my this is this is my favorite actually. I think I'm I'm, I'm almost I think must I put this as a byline at my uh, at the shoe company. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yes. I, yes. I think so. But uh, again, uh, okay. and this is actually it right here. Here is the secret of README files. The one that no one uh, tells you. Uh, you have to use the backwards. Uh, quote or what would call an accent mark uh, okay. as if it was a quote and that's the secret secret of readme files so if you notice I have an example down here github uh, git clone all this this will appear as code in the readme file but you have to but you have to use the backwards quote not the single quote and um, it took me only an hour to figure that out as I eventually cut and pasted out of a document and pasted it in and started working I'm like what is that and I realized it's an accent mark not a quote and, and that is the secret uh, of all things and again I put in here the readme files are not WYSIWYG so uh, do not fight it, like, you know, become one with the, uh, with the readme logic, just let it flow. Pretend you're in an earlier environment in which we thought command lines were great. Because <laughs> that's where, yeah, yeah, this is, you know, text editor would be really advanced technology for this actually. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so, so, the, uh, so this particular example here, uh, you know, it would make it actually appear like code in the readme file. We'll see that in just a second. And so, then, so that's the secret back quote or the accent mark, which is right next to the tilde. And then here are some more. So if you want a whole section of code, of course you would know that you would use not two, but three using a German three. Notice, you know, it's always, always German hand signs for me. Uh, must be something like I use German software. Uh, but you use three of these little crazy uh, backward ticks to uh, create a list of code inside of the readme file. And that's the, one of the other uh, uh, crazy tricks. And you'll notice that I have the three, in, three pound sign here. So this would be a th third level 
a header and then this text and that text below there do not bother to try to format that just let it flow because it's remember it's documentation it's not uh your resume and so let just let it flow and then i have yeah here's my other one i came up with i like that one so same guy but i yeah he had more to say <laughs> And I remember in the days in which there was a, uh, somewhere on a shelf, there was a notebook that no one could ever lose. Yeah. It had all the handwritten notes on the typed in documentation and the couple post-it notes that were worth gold. And so, so yeah, we don't do that now. We just don't have documentation. <laughs> and so, so lastly, uh, uh, here is uh, from this gentleman here out in GitHub, uh, right here. Uh, he's put a really good cheat sheet that will tell you everything you actually really need to know. He's got like 1,700 forks on that uh, cheat sheet. Uh, so uh, so every, everyone tries to edit it to look at the content that causes it to fork. I know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it, uh, it keeps forking, but it tells you, it gives you all the examples and what to do. And then, uh, so this is what the source code of a numbered list would look like uh, in, uh, the, uh, uh, in the readme. And this would actually come out number one, and then little Roman I, then two Roman I's and that, because again, you cannot control the format. All you can do is, you know, let it go. Now, if you want to control the format, you put the three little back ticks up and that will give you some limited control, but it is very hard. And then if you want to put comments in, which is even getting funnier to put comments inside of a dot read, I think that's going a bit far, comments inside of a readme file to tell me what the readme file is doing. I had a loss to, to, I'm not into recursive documentation myself, but maybe the rest of you are. <laughs> I haven't quite figured out what that would be for. But anyways, you can put comments in a readme file. <clears throat> and I'm not sure the why you'd want to, I, because if you start putting in comments about how you're maintaining the readme file, usually those should be in the readme file, not, yeah, so it's uh, kind of unique, but yeah. But you can put comments in there and then you can see my favorite joke about units programmers. Uh, so yeah, and, yeah, we, yeah, my boss says we need some Unix programmers. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. and then it, yeah, when the nurse comes by, tell her never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite. So that is, uh, yeah. Demo? Yes, we do have a demo. We we and we have a demo. So we got through all the uh, that. So we'll switch over to. Uh, we have here the README file, which looks so beautiful, yes, that I had done for uh, how to install Conda and write some uh, uh, Kaggle uh, contest programs and stuff here. Uh, and so this is a beautiful, yeah, beautiful, beautiful README file. And so, uh, and if, so all we have to do is go into edit it and it becomes unbeautiful. <laughs> And you can see there's our, our pound signs. Notice just one pound sign. I'm a one pound sign guy. I'll put the pound signs on the end of the line. You can do that if you want. Uh, and you'll see that I go down a level. And then you'll see here is the beautiful uh, backward uh, tick that you have to know. And here's the quadruple uh, ticks uh, that we talked about. And um, I even have some inline ticks here. And and, and there's even a software fault in the hair. Yes, I have somehow uh, managed to trip this one right here. And you can see it's right there. That is the wrong tick. So, so that is why the whole line turned gray on me. But the software forgave me and figured it out. And so we will correct uh, that mistake. And see, that's what we meant. <laughs> and, and that's been there all this time. And it actually uh, pr made the line look correct. And so now what we can do, now that we have corrected the mistake that I had, when I just saw, we can actually uh, preview the changes. And so they give you a cool preview button here. And you can see that my uh, Monty directory is, uh, my little line of code is all uh, correct now. Yeah, you didn't notice it was wrong before, neither did I. 
And so, the, and so here's the here's the correction I made right uh, here. See? And those ticks are good for copy pasting code, right? Uh, the ticks are you so to go back go back to the uh, editor here. Uh, so the triple the triple ones are for setting the code out. Uh, single ones to give you a uh, 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 a little uh, highlight, if you like. And then you even have, there's even commands to do like function keys and all sorts of things, which are all on that re that uh, cheat sheet that that gentleman has. You can do, you can go crazy with this stuff if you want to actually do, you know, like Mac stuff, you know, control this, that stuff. So you can actually get that all in there. So you can put a full set of instructions in there if you want. So, and this is the uh, effectively the markup language used for uh, for uh, Unix anyway. So if you're messing with man files, it's pretty much the same, same, same craziness. And there's a whole bunch of editors that will translate things into this. But uh, uh, but yeah, you can see that you just let it go. You don't don't try to format anything. Just let it go. So. Awesome. And so that is. Uh, and so we'll we will. Uh, Back to the preview. So you can see the bug fix that we had right there in the preview mode. And so we will now fix readme and commit our changes. And now we have a beautiful, beautiful readme file with no mistakes in it. So awesome. And then you'll see. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that the little Titanic thing, oh, here's one little cool thing that I worked out. So you can see that I have highlighted that, but if we go back to the uh, uh, edit, I actually worked that part out. Let's, uh, where's my edit button? Hmm. I can't reach my edit button because I got my face in the way. <laughs> hmm. That wasn't expected. Yeah. yeah, I'll just go back a few. There it is. I'll take my pencil out there. So, you know, so we back to the uh, little Titanic uh, thing here. You'll see that I have the underlying Titanic thing here. And then I have this here. And so that combination produces that link. So that is what a link looks like. Yeah, that's, that's the URL. There's the URL in parentheses next to the underlined uh, bracket Titanic. Yep. And again, it's in the cheat sheet. At least I think it's in the cheat sheet. I didn't check for that one. So, but yeah, but here, go look at mine, steal, copy, you know, revise. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. But yeah, I would, you can go crazy with this stuff, but again, don't try to fight it too much. Yeah, the important thing here, I've experienced someone who can get bugs. If you have a good reading, I'll generally look at your project. Yes. I generally don't. So, so that is the presentation on README, and we'll uh, ask if there are any more questions because that's it's just uh... so that's it.